Coming up, a jumper, a car on fire, and a burned body. The mystery on the Skyway still puzzling investigators. So he said, grab the life jackets, we're going to hit the water. The words no passenger wants to hear. The Bay Area couple who defied the odds speaks out. And after months of bickering, it comes down to a vote today. Will Tampa's tent city get new legs? Now from your news channel, the morning's first news, traffic, and weather on the nines. This is Bay News 9's Your Morning News. Good morning to you. I'm Erica Riggins. And I'm meteorologist Julie Marcus. So glad to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. October 13th today, we'll get to those headlines with Julie first. People hoping, waiting on this cooler weather. How much longer do we have to wait? Till the end of the week, Erica. Today we're going to have some near record high temperatures. We'll start to have some changes over the next couple of days, but we really aren't going to feel that cool down until the weekend. Right now it's 79 degrees in Tampa. Bradenton, 74 degrees. Brooksville, you're checking in with 70 degrees at this hour. As we look ahead to this afternoon, we'll pick up a few more clouds and it will become partly sunny. There's a chance of some isolated showers and thunderstorms today as a sea breeze develops, but I think most of us will be dry. Highs will reach the low 90s again this afternoon with the low rain chances continuing. Now the rain chances will be increasing by Thursday as the cold front approaches the area. We'll talk more about that with your weather on the nines forecast coming up. Right now, Aaron Sawyer joins us with traffic. Aaron. Hey, Julie, we're live right now with Sky 975 over Bruce B. Downs. You can see here some very heavy traffic, normally a tough spot, A, for the volume, and B, if you get yourself positioned just right, you get that sun right in the eyes. We have some delays as you get closer to downtown as well. Aaron Sawyer in the Bay News 9 Traffic Center. Aaron, thank you. Our top story for you this morning, investigators digging for answers. Drivers, they're hoping for a smoother ride this morning. Traffic should be back to normal on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Bay News 9's Jason Lanning is now live from the north end of that bridge. Jason, chaos out there yesterday. What have you learned so far? Well, at this point, we know the situation started as a car fire in the top spans of the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, Erica. But after the situation was under control, firefighters made a very gruesome discovery. Now it will be up to the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner's Office to begin this investigation and identify the bodies. Driving by the scene, the burned up car sits on a flatbed tow truck draped with a blue tarp shortly before it was towed to the Hillsborough County Medical Examiner's Office. These are pictures taken by Bay News 9 viewers yesterday. You can see the black smoke billowing from the car fire on top of the bridge. Once that fire was put out, a dead body burned beyond recognition found in the trunk. Witnesses driving over the bridge told investigators they saw a man walking away from the car carrying what looked like a gas can. Moments later, a Florida Highway Patrol trooper and fisherman in the area saw a man jump off the bridge to his death. The crime scene investigation lasted more than five hours, tying up traffic until after 10 o'clock last night. Investigators have a lot of work to do to figure out why this all happened. They still haven't released the identity of the man that jumped off the bridge, and the medical examiner's office in Hillsborough County will likely have to match dental records to ID the body found in the trunk of the car. And once the uh, ME in Hillsborough County identifies these bodies, that will be a big step for investigators to try and figure out why this all happened. Erica. Jason, thank you. Now we do have another view of that Skyway fire to show you just how big it was. One viewer snapped this picture eight miles away from the Skyway. Richard Trago was at Port Manatee looking at the smoke on the bridge. And we've got more up close pictures of that wreck on the Skyway. You can go to our website. It's baynews9.com. Look for the story on our front page. Click slideshow link. In the meantime, we are still waiting to hear more about a body found in St. Petersburg. Crime scene tape roped off Mirror Lake yesterday afternoon. This lake is off 3rd Avenue North. Here's what we do know. There are no signs of foul play or any kind of trauma. Investigators have not released the victim's name yet. Our Hernando County cheerleader is recovering this morning. A powder puff football game took its toll on her. The Nature Coast High School student was hurt in a game last night. She collided with another girl. We don't know much about her injuries except that she hit her head. Now crews had to airlift her to Bayfront Medical Center. No word yet today on her condition. Well, that battle over a proposed tent city in Hillsborough County will all come to a head today. It's decision day for commissioners. Catholic Charities wants to put up the homeless haven on Hillsborough Avenue and Harney Road. But neighbors, they're crying out, not in my backyard. Bay News 9's Catherine Simmons is live from the Hillsborough County Center in downtown Tampa. Catherine, folks are expected to pack that meeting today. 
That's right. You know, the meeting starts in an hour and already there's some folks here from that East Lake Park subdivision. That subdivision is across the street from where the proposed site is for the tent city. And their biggest concern is the buffer between their homes and the homeless. If you look in East Lake Park subdivision, it doesn't take long to find these stop tent city signs and strong opinions. You can help the homeless, but what I'm trying to say is that is not the place to put them. The neighborhood of more than 300 homes is across the street from where hundreds of homeless could live on this piece of land. Hal Hart is behind Stop Tent City. He's concerned crime will go up. We will absolutely stand firm and protect ourselves. Catholic Charities says they do have a security plan, which is similar to Pinellas Hope. The residents have curfews. They promise to completely fence in the property. Staff will man the gate 24 hours to check people and belongings and they will hire overnight security to walk the premises. Hart says that still doesn't protect their neighborhood. It certainly hasn't done anything to control what happens outside the fence. And that's our primary concern, is what's going to be happening outside the fence. So residents have taken it upon themselves to make changes. The Neighborhood Community Center has these new security lights and will soon upgrade the surveillance cameras. Residents are also arming themselves. I do have a security system but I'm getting ready to upgrade that. I've ordered uh, commercial grade uh, lighting for my house and uh, my wife is talking about buying a Mossberg sweep street sweeper, her you know, weapon of choice. And Hart says if the tent city is approved, he will replace these signs with warning signs telling the homeless they won't tolerate crime. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, they're the ones that uh, patrol the Pinellas Hope area. So some of those off-duty officers will be here today as well to talk about how they keep the, the, their area safe and talking to Hillsborough commissioners. Erica? Kathy, what kind of background checks will be done on the homeless who want to stay there? Well, you know, Catholic Charities said that they do background checks, criminal background checks, before they even get into the gates, but they also make the people do uh, alcohol and drug tests as well. Uh, some people inside do have criminal backgrounds, but Catholic Charities says it's a case-by-case -case basis. All right, Catherine, thank you. Well, if county commissioners vote yes this morning on the rezoning, this is not over. The Stop Tent City group plans to fight back by filing an appeal and possibly filing a lawsuit. Commissioners still have to change the minimum housing code to allow people to live on the property in tents. Today's meeting starts about an hour from now, 9 o'clock, at the Hillsborough County Center. Meantime, other Hillsborough County leaders have another battle to fight. Our partners at the Times of Fort, a neighborhood activist, filed complaints against County Administrator Pat Bean, County Attorney Renee Lee, and County Commissioner Kevin White. That complaint claims Bean and Lee abused their powers when they gave themselves raises back in 2007. White's complaint is tied to his sexual discrimination lawsuit. Leaders on the national stage also have a big vote today. The Senate Finance Committee will decide on that health care reform bill. Now the committee's chairman, Max Baucus, designed this plan. This bill would extend health coverage to 94% of the country. It's also the only one that does not have a public health care option. Yesterday, a watchdog group claimed this proposal would run up insurance premiums. So at the White House, they disagree with that. We will bring you the results of today's vote as soon as it happens. Well, that traffic mess is clear. Now we're just waiting to find out how the wreck happened. The accident happened in Tampa around 3.30 this morning. At the intersection of Country Way and Hillsborough Avenue, a car was trapped underneath that semi truck. The two people inside also trapped. They had to be taken to the hospital. It's the ultimate tale of survival. This morning, we're hearing from a newlywed couple that not only survived a plane crash, but a long night out waiting for help in the Gulf. We first brought you Whitney and Ben Page's story over the weekend. The couple was flying from Tampa to the Florida Keys with Whitney's stepfather at the controls. Something, though, went very wrong during that flight. Everything went quiet, and we thought, huh, how weird. And then we hear Peter call over a mayday uh, to the air traffic controller, and we thought, well, that's not right. And so he said, grab the life jackets. We're going to hit the water. All three spent 12 hours clinging to a buoy. They said they could hear the plane searching. That's what kept them going. Well, the family is still in the Florida Keys this morning. We're expecting them back in the Bay Area sometime this week.
A tasty lunch or a deadly weapon? Well, coming up, a burrito crosses the border. A teen now faces charges. Plus, fall may be late getting here, but winter is already making an early arrival in other places. We'll have a look at the weather across the Midwest. But first, our local weather forecast with meteorologist Julie Marquez in our weather center. Now, your weather on the nines forecast featuring Kleistron 9. It's now 8.09 in Erica. Some of that cooler air will be coming our way late in the week into the weekend, but not for now. It's going to be another hot day today. Lots of sunshine showing up on our Sky 9 Network camera at the Tradewinds Resort. This is the view at St. Pete Beach. Mostly clear skies here. There's a front across North Florida and actually stretches all the way along the northern Gulf Coast back into Texas. Rainy weather, Texas, Louisiana, up into Arkansas, and we're going to have a chance of a couple of showers and thunderstorms along the boundary in North Florida today. But I think around Tampa Bay and southward, it's only about a 20% chance of rain. The rain chance is slightly higher in our northern counties for this afternoon. As we look at the current numbers, it's 73 degrees, Haines City and Lakeland, Tampa 78, St. Petersburg 79, and 72 degrees this morning in Crystal River and Weehiwachee. North side of St. Pete, it's 80 degrees, the wind southeast at three miles per hour. We've picked up a half an inch of rain here so far this month. Downtown Lakeland is now 79 degrees. Our weather station there showing 85% humidity and not much rain in downtown Lakeland, less than a tenth of an inch of rain so far. With the high pressure system dominating our weather, most of us have stayed hot and dry. And today's going to be another mainly dry day with just a small opportunity for a couple of showers or some isolated storms. Right now, Clystron 9 is showing us the dry weather. We're going to have a sea breeze today that will allow for a chance of a shower or a thunderstorm later on. So let's look ahead to later in the week. We're going to have another hot day today. Could have some record highs in a few locations, low 90s for some of us this afternoon. It won't be quite as hot Wednesday into Thursday as the front approaches the area. And here's a look at Friday morning, and here's that cooler air. Friday, we're going to have a better chance of rain. Because of the rain and the cloud cover, it won't be quite as hot. But we really have to wait until the weekend before we start to see some of that cooler air dipping back down into our area. Hot and humid today. Highs in the low 90s this afternoon. Near the coast, it will be near 90 degrees with a sea breeze later today. Now, as we check out tonight, we're going to have some isolated evening thunderstorms possible, otherwise partly cloudy. Lows drop down into the 70s overnight. Some low 70s are possible in our northern counties first thing tomorrow morning. Wednesday, a high of 90 degrees with a slight chance of showers or thunderstorms. We'll talk more about our rain chances and the cooler weather with the seven-day forecast coming up at 819. Aaron Sawyer joins us now with traffic. And Julie, we still have an accident scene causing delays. The upper reaches of Hillsborough County, Pierce Ave eastbound at 275. Right lane still blocked and delays still roll right back beyond Florida Avenue for a tough ride to get to 275. The good news is once you're on the main line, you're in pretty good shape, slowing only slightly here as you approach downtown. Elsewhere, we do have an accident here. It's busy clearing stages southbound on 70, 275 before the apex at Highway 54. Right lane is just about to be swept up. The last of the accident vehicles is being hooked up as we speak, and delays are minimal. Overall, volume remains light out here. 75 southbound coming down to I-4. There is a crash on the northbound side, though, of 75, right at Gibsonson Road. That's partially blocking the exit ramp. And as a result, you get a little delay here, no more than a quarter mile's worth in the right travel lane heading northbound. At 275 south, you're on the brakes briefly as you approach Malfunction Junction. That's about it. You're flying along getting out to the Howard Franklin Bridge and Pinellas County delay-free. No problems up here. Upper reaches of Pinellas County are quiet with no major volume. Building 19 getting down towards the on and off ramps here, or, or I should say at Almerton at the intersection. You're fine either side of that intersection. Upper reaches here through St. Pete. you got a breakdown off to the right-hand side just as you approach Roosevelt Avenue, 275 North. That itself will be hauled out of the way in the next five minutes. No problems across the Bay Bridges. Aaron Sawyer in the Bay News 9 Traffic Center. This Kleistron 9 weather forecast is brought to you by Golden Diamond Source, a jeweler you've known and trusted for over 30 years. Get cash now. Go to GoldenDiamondSource.com to order your free gold kit today. Keep an eye on the skies anytime. Get Bay News 9's Kleistron 9 radar right on your cell phone or PDA. No matter where you go, stay informed when severe weather threatens. Just go to BayNews9.com mobile. 